Yes, the answer to that is yes, I'm recording is starting now. So yes, Lori, I will put that on my YouTube channel. So your, your um, projects for today is that you're gonna be going through and deciding what this is gonna look like for you. And if you add a page and then once it gets you know bigger, you're like, you know what, I really don't like that page. You can always come over here and click on the three little dots and delete it from your pages. So yeah, these are kind of hard to read but they're all really good. The content in it is already ready for you. And all you have to do is go in and kind of change out some of the personalization stuff. You know, if you don't like certain things that are, are listed here in the process, you can change those as well. And I'm gonna show you once you have figure, figured out what you want in your listing packet, how now to go in and edit each page. Any question on how to get the template pieces into your main forms so that you can start editing them? I will take your silence as Jessica's the best teacher around and you just, there's no confusion here, right? Great. <laughs> so within this editing software, I'm gonna start with this first page first. Maybe if it comes up. Come on computer, work with me. Oh, someone's chatting with me. Pre-listing versus listing presentation again. Yes, Cindy, I can explain the difference between that. So a lot of agents like to send a pre-listing packet or a package, like a basket of fun goodies and things to their appointments prior to them showing up. So usually 24 hours prior to an appointment, when I was in production, I would send my pre-listing packet, some homework for them to do, such as like the um, disclosures and um, the MLS information sheet. I'd send that ahead of time so they could get started on it. And also some fun homeworks. Like I have a page that said, what's your favorite candy bar? What's your favorite restaurant? You know, just so I could get to know them a little bit more. And I would deliver that to their place of business or their home prior to our appointment. And that way they could read through the pre-listing packet, figure out all they needed to know about me so that when I got there for their listing presentation, we could focus on them and getting their house sold. And I actually told them that when they said, yeah, thank, um, yes, I'd like you to come over. I'd say, great. The next step is I'm going to be sending you a pre-listing packet. It's going to talk about me, a little bit about Keller Williams, and that way you know everything you need to know about me when I show up, we can concentrate on you. So that was the pre-listing packet. It was li literally just about me. It was about some, some of my strategies to get their house sold and a Keller Williams versus the listing presentation where you go more in depth on, on your comparables that you're using to price their home. I would talk to them about um, all the different steps involved in closing a home because I was bulletproofing the contract at this point. So your listing presentation is going to be a little bit more substantial than your pre-listing packet. And we wanna make sure that as far as bulletproofing the contract is concerned, we're setting them up so there's no surprises. So in my pre-listing packet, I wanted to make sure that when I left there, they felt ready and really informed on what was gonna be happening in the process of selling their home. Does that answer your question? Cindy? Yes, it did. Okay, perfect. <laughs> So yeah, you may design two different or you may just go ahead and send your listing presentation. It's up to you. I'm trying to get one of these to come up so that, you know, whenever I do these classes, am I right, Dave? Nothing ever works when you need it to. There we go. So we'll start with this little process page. So to come in here, you have the process of selling the real estate and all the different steps in the process. You can come in here and click on any of these and change what it says so that it matches your process. We don't want anything in here that you're not intending to do, right? Can you share that screen? Is it, it's small compared to big. Like I, I can, when I zoom in, does it help? Mm, it's just different than what it was. But that's is, okay, go ahead. Is everyone having that problem? Anyone? Nope, it's just me. Never oh. mind, I, I capped on it. My okay. bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Jeanette is asking, in this current market, is a pre-listing packet actually being utilized or are agents capitalizing on the opportunity to connect more immediately to make the appointment? Um, and I think in every market, a pre-listing packet is always a good idea, especially if you're up against other agents. If you're sending a pre-listing packet or package with a bunch of goodies and such and making an impression right off the bat, if you're up against anybody else, you're going to take that appointment. 
um, capitalizing on the opportunity to connect more immediately to make that appointment, you should always give yourself enough time to get everything together that you need to do. So whether that's, that's different for every single person. Some people are okay taking an appointment later today and getting after it, in which case I would just send the pre-listing packet like right after I hung up the phone, I'd go ahead and deliver it to their place of work or, or their house so they could leave through it and have that homework done before I got there if we're in a faster moving pace. Otherwise, I always like to give myself 24 hours unless it's time is of the essence and they're like, if you don't come tonight, I'm not listing with you, then maybe you change your standards of business. But everyone's standards of business are different. Always give yourself enough time to get all the things together that you need to get together to get the best quality product. Does that answer the, the question? Jeanette? If I might add. Please, Dave. A pre-listing packet sets you apart from every other agent. And a pre-listing packet establishes your value proposition on why they should choose you before you even walk through the door. So and most agents don't do that. They go in and they use their personality to try and get the listing, um, and, but they're not really creating a value. So when you provide a packet, it also makes it easier to talk about commissions because you've actually established what it is that you're going to be doing for them ahead of time. So always do a pre-listing packet because it's about you and the company. Uh, the listing appointment, like Jessica said, is about them and, and marketing their house and, and the pricing and finding out all that stuff. Exactly right. Because we don't want to spend our entire listing appointment chatting about ourselves. We're there for them. And so I like to give all the information about myself prior to so that we could concentrate on them. Plus we're new and we don't want to advertise it. <laughs> you never know. You can always flip that, that script with why it's a benefit to list with a new agent versus a experienced agent where you're just another address on their wall. Right. And then when you become an experienced agent, then you flip the script. Right. But as, as new agents, you have to make it sound appetizing and appealing for them to list with new agents because you're hungry. You're going to do everything. You're, you know, you're their, your, they are your primary concern and focus. There's all sorts of ways you can swing that, Chris. And I'm working it. When you do a good pre listing packet, the question of how long you've been in the business and how many houses you sold probably won't even come up. That's right. Anything else before we move forward? I got another chat. Thank you. You're welcome, Jeanette. I'm glad that answered your question. All right, so now we're moving on to some of the things in the editing software that will make your life really easy. The first thing I wanna show you is if you like this picture and this is great, just keep it here, that's fine. But if you wanna change out any pictures within your templates, you simply click on the picture. It's gonna pop up the images button in your, in your um, editing software. You can put in your pictures or whatever you need to do, or you can come into this company and there are all of these house exteriors, interiors, people dancing, there's pictures of everything. The best part about this is we've been seeing that people have been taking photos off of Google and using them in marketing materials and they're getting in trouble, copyright infringements and things like that. These images in your designs have already been paid for and are owned by Keller Williams. So you don't have to worry about cop copyright infringements. And there's a lot of stuff to choose from in here. If you wanna change out a picture, all you have to do is hover over the picture that you wanna change it out to and push this replace image circle button. When you do that, it's going to pop it directly into the size of that box. So you don't have to get there and be like, oh, it's, mm, uh, you know, and try to figure out how to resize it to fit perfectly in this little box. That replace image button will put it right into the selected portion of your template. If you're just wanting to pop a picture in and there's no space in particular that you need to put it in, you can just hit the plus button and it'll just put the image in there and you can drag it and drop it wherever you want it to go. You can resize it. You can do all the things. If you have some good pictures of your own, can you use them? Yes, if they're yours and you own them. Or if you paid for them at a, at a prior date. Yeah. As long as you own them, we just want to get you guys away from going to Google and being like house exterior and then taking one and putting it in your stuff because, you know, you, not that it happens all the time, but it can happen. So we just want to be safe. If you don't like the way they crop the picture, double click on it and you can drag it up and down however you want to do it. And then when you click off, 
You click done and it saves it just like that. Some of you are like, this writing is tiny. How can I see what's in there? Well, thank goodness for this. When you click on the area that you wanna change, up here at the top comes up all of the different editing things for your words. You can just double click and change it out in here like this, but if you don't have that kind of eyesight, you can click on this little typewriter button, which will bring up this little box in the right and you can see what it says and you can easily go in and change and then hit save changes and it'll apply all the fonts, all the sizes and everything that you need. It'll just change what it says. Sound good? That's gonna change your life guys. Otherwise you're gonna be like, what does that say? Is that spelled right? And you're gonna be zooming in like 110. Just click on where you're wanting to change. All right, you have to hit save changes when you're done and then click the typewriter button and it brings it up over here and you can change it out really easily. Any questions? I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of the editing software so that it will answer any questions prior to them coming up. You can add pictures like Chris was saying, if you go to the images button and click add, you can drag and drop from your computer and then it will save it in your assets so that you can use it later. Sorry, I'm gonna get the chat. That's a good question, Kara. She asks, is this meant to be a PowerPoint presentation on a laptop or is it to be printed and talked through? My answer to that is yes. I used my listing presentation as a printout and then I also made it into a PowerPoint presentation that I could bring my computer and tab through. And then I didn't have to worry about memorizing things. I had scripts connected to each one of my slides, which connected to what they were looking at so they could take notes in the packet and I walked them through it. That's a great question. Tina? I have a question. Would you recommend if we're doing a listing presentation that we go by and get a picture of their actual house for one of the pictures? I mean, we, if we just snapped it on our cell phone or whatever, so it's personalized to their property? I don't think that that would be a problem. I've done it before and it does. Yeah, it makes that extra little pop of personalization. Okay. All right. Thank you. So when you save it, every single time you go to print it, all you have to do is um, it, where it's saved in your command, you just have to hit edit, change out that picture, print it, and you're good to go. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions while we're stopped? Oh, got some more chats. Hold on. I couldn't hear Tina very well at all. She was asking if, um, we, you should go by the house and like take a picture of the outside and put it on your pre-listing packet or listing presentation, standard of business, whatever you want to do. I used to do that just to make it more personal to them. So when they saw the listing packet showed their house, up to you. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, the chat keeps blowing up. Sorry. You're welcome. Is this on KW Connect, um, the editing software and such, or which part are you asking is on KW Connect? Most likely the answer is yes. <laughs> I just wanna make sure I know which part you're talking about. Anyone? Oh, okay, Laura said, I missed what goes into my assets. Can you please repeat? So anything that you add as far as pictures, you can put into your assets and that way it can it can be accessed all the time. So your headshots and things like that. The editor tool, do I access this from KW Connects? This is all through your command system, agent.kw.com. You're welcome, Laura. I guess I'm misunderstanding the question. <laughs> The editing tool, like um, how to use it. Is it in KW Connect, I'm guessing is the question. Yes, okay. So there, in the 66 day challenge that will be in there and I'm sure that there are articles. Whenever you're in your command in the top right hand corner, there's that question mark and you can always go in there and ask if you open the designs tab and hit the question mark, a bunch of articles will come up on how to's. So that's a lot of information in there as well as the 66 day challenge. And you can refer back to this video at any time on my YouTube channel, Jessica Cook, Keller Williams Premier.
think I did I say that enough? <sighs> Jessica Cook Keller Williams. Premier. And there's all sorts of classes in there, guys. So don't be shy. Subscribe and learn. So I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to walk you through real quick this editing stuff, so that when you get in here and you and you just know all the cool stuff that Command can do as far as the editing software is concerned. So first thing is your images, and like we talked about, you have you can upload any images you want by clicking the Add button. You can even add them from your Facebook pages and Google Drives if your Facebook and your Google is connected in your settings, which is pretty cool. So if you need to pull an image off of something that you have already posted in Facebook or anything like that, you can do that. The 66 day challenge is also found in the YouTube world. So if you go into YouTube and, and type in KW 66 day challenge 4.0, you will get the most current and up to date videos for the 66 day challenge and subscribe to Marty Miller. So he picks up, he puts out tips and tricks all the time. Thank you for the question. So you can add any images you want and you can pull them in from Facebook here. The company, like I said, has so many different drop downs of folders that you can use for your advertising that and the images have already been cop copyrighted and 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 uh, ready for you to use our scripts to go along with your presentation and command or do you write that that is for you to write that's the lovely thing about owning your own business is that you get to pick what you get to say and make it truly yours and unique. So as you make your listing presentation, think about what you would say when describing these specific pages, and then it will eventually become a script. If you need to write it down, that's always a good thing and go back in and edit and such. But the PowerPoint presentation, like uh, I, can't, I can't remember if it was Tina or Laura had said, do we put this in a PowerPoint? I did because it helped trigger my memory of what to say. So yeah, I hope that answered the question. No, there's not a set script. You get to write it yourself. And I think I, sorry, the chat's blowing up. I love it. You're welcome, Kara. Okay, so here's all your pictures that you can use. There's all sorts of really cute pictures in here for you guys to utilize in your marketing. Um, people playing outside, people dancing in kitchens, people moving in, people shaking hands with real estate agents. It's all in there. So just make sure you take some time and look through all of the images that are available for you. And it should help all of your needs that you're needing for all of your marketing. The next applet down over here is your text applet. And this is where if I wanted to add some text over here, I could choose what size I wanted. And if you click it, it adds that box over here and you can start putting in whatever you want, resize it, move it, all of the fun things. You can also change color, size, the font. You also get these awesome step-by-step -step guides as you work your way through this. And if you next, 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 it'll tell you all the fun things. So that's how you add text. You also have these things called banners, which at first glance, you're like, I don't even know why I would use any of these, right? Let's get lost in the stars. Why, why would I even need that in real estate? Well, it's not about what it says. It's about how it looks. So if you want to use a banner, if you're like, this is cute, you click it, goes into your, into your flyer. And then what you do is double click on the words. So you may say, open. house click click sunday two to four so the banners are not so much about what is said within the banner it's about how it looks and then you can change out the words does that make sense to everybody and then when you're done you can place it Goes over to the apartment. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so that's what the banners are. Is just a way of putting words into your into your flyers into your marketing. How do you delete something that you have chosen but then decide not to use? If it's words or a picture or whatever, you should be able just to click it and then hit your backspace button on your on your keyboard and it'll delete it right out of there. If it leaves a placeholder, then you can click the placeholder and then hit delete and it'll delete it right out of there as well. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Good question. So that's what you use the banners for, like 80% off, you know, 
we're never going to use what it actually says. So what you're going to use is just the style in which it is presented. Make sense? Under text as well, you have company things that you might have to put on each flyer or each whatever. Right here, it just says each office is independently owned and operated, which is what we are required to put on each one of our marketing materials. Okay. And then under my assets, your designs has already pulled in all your most important information, name, address of your office, your email, phone number. This makes it easier on you. So if I just need to put in my name or whatever, I can just click it and drag it on in here. Trying to make it as easy on you as possible. Isn't that nice? Thank you, KW Command. You rock. So that's what's under the text. Under icons, y'all old enough to remember clip art? You know, this is clip art, guys. Anything you want. Again, all of these images have been bought and paid for through Keller Williams. And so all of them are ready for you to use. So if you're sitting there thinking, you know what my listing presentation needs is a banana. You click on the banana and it puts it in there. Ah, so much better. I was wondering what was missing. It was the banana. You never know what you may use. Like if you're doing a twilight showing, you may want some stars or some little glasses of wine or things like that. And so this is what the stock icons are for. Let me find the chat. Dancing paper clip, clip art. Yes, that's exactly right. The dancing paper clip. Y'all remember, you all on my, on my level. And what's cute is like, if you have a picture of a family or yourself or something, and it's around the holidays, you could put on a little Santa hat. There's all sorts of cute things that you can do with your stock icons. We also have company icons, which is your basic, like, you know, email icon, phone number, cell phone icons, all the fun things. And then in assets, there's nothing there, but you can add any little clip arts that you want by clicking add and dragging and dropping from your computer. We also have logos. Your company logo should already be up and loaded. If it's not there, you can go to your MyKW under marketing and find your logo, logos and branding. All you have to do is search your market center number in your MyKW to find those logos. Um, if you have any questions about that, visit your market center tech trainer and it gives you a zipped drive of your market center's logo so that you can use it and then you can upload it into your command. Under company though, we have all of the KWs you could possibly ever want right here to use. Also under company, you have labs, you have miscellaneous little uh, equal opportunity housing, you know, National Association of Realtors logos, luxury logos, all sorts of things. We had red day stuff all ready to go. So those logos are in there and ready. One of my favorite parts of this um, editing software is this KWLS button. What you can do is actually search for listings and it will bring in all of the pictures from the MLS. So if you are editing a flyer for an open house or something and you need a listing, does anyone have an active listing right now or could give me an address of an active listing? No? Result. So usually you'd want to search by listing address. Let me find one that's active. Dang it. Don't worry, you guys. Soon I'll say, does anyone have an active listing and you all are going to- I can, I have one off of Realtor. Oh, no. The 64 West Ottawa? No, I was just saying I had one. I can look it up. Oh, here's one. David okay. Foster gave me one. Thank you. Eight, seven, four, seven, East 104th place. Is that in Owasso, Claremore? Anyone? Tulsa, there it is. Gotcha. Okay, so see down here, here's the listing right here. And all I have to do is hit the select button and it's going to pull in all the information and all the photos from the MLS so that I don't have to go to the MLS, download or whatever. And now all I have to do is click the area that I want to put the photo in, use the handy dandy circle replace image button, pop that image in there and you're on to the next thing. Pretty awesome. Also, if you don't have things memorized in your head like school district and things and you want to put it on your flyer, you can also click the listing details button 
And here's all the details about the house from the MLS that you can then put into your flyer or your listing presentation, all the things. Yes, pretty cool, right? You also have neighborhood snapshots. I'm hoping that this is up and going. It wasn't working the other day. Maple Glen also. There you are. So when you do this, it should bring up a neighborhood snap down here that you can then plug in. There it is. So if I wanted, if I was listing a house in Maple Glen, I could use these neighborhood snaps and they are the most updated and current information on the market about this particular neighborhood. And I could put it right in my flyer if I was listing a house in Maple Glen. Pretty cool, right? So again, that's under KWLS. You can look for listings and bring in all the information on listings of houses and pictures and things under listing. And then you can find neighborhood snapshots so that you can include information on the neighborhood in your listing presentations. And in some of the templates, you'll notice that there is neighborhood information and this will help you with that. Yes, everything that we can do, everything that command can do to make your life easier, they have done for you. And this editing software is pretty killer. Um, every snapshot looks differently. This one says how many active listings are there, how many total pending. This is the average days on the market for that neighborhood and the average price per square foot, and then the average list price, and then where it is on the map. So every, every snapshot is going to be different because they all look a little different and feature different information. Some of it's just a map. So you can always add any information that you want to in as well. Great. So any questions about that? So now you know how to go into your designs, into your templates, design your, your listing presentation the way you want it to look. And then once you've figured all the pages you want in, you're going to go into each page and edit it so that you like what it looks like. And don't forget your banana because that makes everything better. After you're finished with your listing presentation, you will save it and then you can download it into your computer as a PDF, and then you can start using it. When you're ready to start working on your buyer console, you're gonna do the same steps. We're gonna go into our designs applet here, push the plus sign in the bottom right-hand corner and go to print marketing. And next, and it's gonna bring up all those templates again. And then under buyer, you have your buyer presentation first thing. So Dave, can you tell me a little bit about what was told to them about what information to put into listing and buyer presentations? So I know that I'm uh, not being myself. I couldn't really say because Debbie, uh, Debbie taught the listing presentation. So go, you can go back to your career launch and kind of review what she had, which was the Ignite version, but it can give you some ideas. And then I think Julie talked about it a little bit on um, her buyer consultation thing. Mm -hmm. And she just, she threw up some versions, you know, to look at, but really, um, yeah, um, there's not a whole lot to change. If you yeah. just think about this, whatever you're afraid of, uh, of missing when you do a consultation or a presentation, uh, it should be in here. So mm -hmm. at this point, I wouldn't take out too much but if you feel uh, led to take out some stuff, feel free. This yeah. is this is where you get to be you and design it. And the cool thing is, is just because you do it this time doesn't mean you can't go back and fix it later, huh, Jess? That's exactly right. And this should be a living, breathing document that changes with you. You know, um, you may be putting in new testimonials. You may be, you know, changing that your kid's age is not five anymore. It's now six or whatever. It should be something that, you know, it's it doesn't have to be changed all the time, but you can change it when you need to. If you need just a blank page, you can just go ahead and throw something in there and then delete all the pieces of it and then start from scratch. Boom. I just want to add that when you finish this, you're going to be presenting it to uh, the people at your market center. Yes. So they'll give you some feedback as well. And if you're missing anything or, you know, the big thing is guys is as much information as you want to include, but don't get 
so where you're handing them a novel, you know, <laughs> make sure that it's concise. Um, the way I made my personal buyer um, consultation is I went into the shift book and I went to the bulletproofing the transaction space. Um, I think it starts on 141 in the shift book. I'd have to find it. And I made sure that my buyer console and my listing presentation covered some of the, th the main reasons that contracts fall. And that way I could make sure I was bulletproofing my contract because what's the point if we're not making it to the closing table, right? We got to give the information that they need to um, make good decisions and to make sure they're always in the know. So there's no surprises. Uh, it starts on page 241 of the shift book. If you do not have this book, your market center has it, get it. It's an amazing book. Yeah, Kelly, she got it. Uh, amazing book, bulletproofing the contract. So Everyone's is gonna look different. There's no right or wrong here. It's your standard of business. Dave, are we going to be presenting both the entire listing and buyer presentation to our market center is the question. You betcha by golly, wow. You betcha by golly, wow. Cause what so you practice, the thing. practice on people the that love you and not just practicing on the people. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're gonna get the listing and you're gonna get the buyer to work with you. you not can, that's not with me every time. But here's, here's a, an overview criteria of, of when you're thinking of through this thing. Uh, when you're doing a buyer consultation, uh, the buyer consultation, you should be able to complete within 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the consultation at, will, have, will have a list of all the questions that you need to talk with them as well as presenting how, the thing, how things are going to go. Okay? okay. When you're doing a listing consultation, your presentation, because you already did a pre-listing packet, you're... you're consultation should really be no more than 15 to 20 minutes okay and asking them all the questions and, and going through the whole thing because the rest of the uh, uh, listing presentation is going to be filling out the listing docs well first of all talking over the price talking over the CMA coming to that and then filling out the listing docs so you're basically done in an hour yep and I do we need to have our um our CMA ready also when we do the the listing consultation are we going to talk about this the market analysis when we do that that is that included in part of it yeah because you can't fill out the contract if you don't know what you're going to well, list the house at right i'm just going to say if you the want a specialist if you want a star that might be a good idea that's kind of <laughs> like i was very impressed by you by the few of you who uh, uh actually filled out the net to seller by hand impressed the heck out of me and i was even more impressed by those of you who had never done um, command before and DocuSign and did your whole listing uh, agreement through DocuSign. Praise, awesome. listen, look at awesome. you guys. Oh, I tried absolutely. hard, I couldn't figure it out. After an hour, I gave up and went to the handwriting. Oh okay. man. Go back and do it again. That's the purpose of this is to work through this stuff now when you're not in a panic and kudos. Everybody's doing a great job. You can't lose at this. The idea is to go through it and, and work through this this pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, I might need a tutor. Job. And huh? don't don't psych yourself out on the net to seller. I'm just telling you because it happened and yeah. I didn't do it. And if you need a tutor and command, that's what your market center tech trainer is for. Schedule a 30 minute consultation with them and come in with questions so that they can they can put you in the right direction. So yeah, Dave's right. I mean, we want to make sure that we're in and out of there. We don't want to turn a yes into a no, right? And so make sure in your pre-listing packet, you have what to have ready, you know? I'll tell you when I was a new agent, I, I'd like have the contract signed and I'd be like, great, can't wait to get to work for you. And I'd get out of there and then I'd be like, I didn't even get the key. I didn't get the key, you know? Like, <laughs> so have that list of things. And your hope is that you're so impressive before you even walk through the door that when you walk through the door, they have the homework filled out, they have the key to the house and they're ready to hand it to you. And you're like, great, let's fill out this contract, right? Um, so that's our that's our hope for you. Um, send, the, send some of the stuff to cut down on the time you're spending in the house, such as the disclosure, because otherwise you're just gonna sit there like this. As they fill out the disclosure, let them do that on their own time, right? Um, there's also an online disclosure that all Keller Williams have access to that Keller Williams has paid for for you called Seller Shield. SellerShield.com. 
you log in with your agent number and create an account and you can send online versions of the property disclosures for people to fill out prior to the, you getting there. What's cool about that is they can't even submit it to back to you unless everything's filled out. So no more of your of your back office people being like, um, is there a pool or how old's the roof? You know, you just they can't even hit submit unless they unless they fill it out to completion. So that's an option for you as well. What else did I send ahead of time? The six page MLS information sheet. That thing takes freaking forever. Am I right? It just takes so much time. And what you do is you're like, is your dryer gas or electric? And they're like, God, I don't know. Let me go look. And, and they have to get up and they got to go and they got to pull their dryer out, right? Let them do that before you get there. Let them fill out as much of that MLS information sheet prior to you arriving that they can. And just let them know that you'll fill in the blanks of anything they didn't understand. So then you have your disclosure done and your MLS data sheet. And that is a big chunk of the listing paperwork already handled. So if you're like, man, how am I supposed to get out of there in 45 minutes? Dave, you crazy. There's so much stuff. This is gonna help you by sending it ahead of time, right? With your pre-listing packet. Sound good? So what we're gonna do is send you on your way. Are you going to get frustrated? Yeah. Are you gonna wanna throw this computer through the window? Maybe a couple times, but is it better now than when you're in serious, DEF CON 1 and you have an appointment in two hours? Yes, do this now, have it ready. And that way when they say yes on the phone, you're like, awesome, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. I'm, I will have a pre-listing packet to you in the next 30 to 45 minutes or in the next 24 hours or whatever your standard is. And you are already setting yourself up way better than anyone else they may be looking at. And that's what you want, correct? Yes. So. Go for it. Your Market Center Tech Trainers are there for you. If you're having trouble with these templates and things and the editing software, it will get easier, guys. This is the first time you're diving in. Utilize the 66-day challenge. I'm going to go ahead and save this video and post it to my Facebook or my YouTube channel just as soon as it's done processing so that you can refer back to it. Any questions before I leave you for the day? Excellent. You guys ready to go get your stuff together? We just all want your personal phone number and we'll call you incessantly. Oh my, yes. <laughs> yes, joking. yes, I'm joking, joking, joking. Well, that's the great thing. Because you're the best, Chris, you're the best. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys, stop it. I'm blushing. Now, I, if you are in, in Premier, you guys got my number. You all have amazing market center tech trainers who are just sitting there waiting for you to call them, waiting for you to set up consultations. That's their job. So utilize your people, okay? They're here for you. If you need me, I'm here for you as well. Check out the YouTube channel. There's so much information. Any other questions? I appreciate you guys so much for being here. It's Friday Eve. You guys are close to the last day. Dave, did you wanna say anything? I was just gonna say, once you spend a little time today and you're on the other side of this presentation, your life is gonna be so much easier because it's already done, you've already got it saved, your confidence level will go way up. So a little bit of concentrated effort today will make a huge difference in what you're gonna feel like next week when you begin calling sellers or working with buyers at open houses. It's like, I got this, here it is. Most people don't have, 90% of the agents out there don't use these things and don't have them. Yep, your confidence level is gonna to shoot to the top because even if you don't know it, if you in the back of your head are thinking, what the heck am I going to do if they say yes? You're going to subconsciously sabotage yourself when you're on the phone. They're like, no. And you're like, that's great. Have a great day. Click. Instead of being like, no. Oh, why? I mean, this is, an, I'm amazing. Like, let's get this thing happening. Right. When would you like me to come over? You're going to get more confidence instead of being like, okay, like, like. you know exactly what you're going to do. Okay. Okay. And if, you, uh, uh, if you're a little nervous about giving it to your productivity coach, your person at your market center, give it to your spouse, your brother, your, brother. Your, sister, your mother, your father, to anybody else that you want to. And guess what? They love you. They're going to say you're awesome. It's true. Have you ever had a friend who just started Cutco and they're like, hey, can I come to your house and show you my presentation with Cutco? And they come over and, you're, and it, were you like, how 
you are the worst. This is awful. No, they love you and they want you to be the best, the greatest. So utilize the people that love you already. And your productivity people, they love you. They're not going to string you up in the square and throw apples at you. If you mess up, they're going to help you through it. Okay. And just by the way, so you know what you mean, what you understand, what we mean when we say we love you, it's the commitment to the peace, joy, security, and development of an agent in our market center. Aw, Dave, can you get that cross-stitched on a pillow for me? <laughs> yes. Let's all run out and carve our initials into a tree. I love it. I love that, Dave. You're <laughs> You're the best. He really is so encouraging. He is, we underestimate it because we're around Dave all the time, but he's seriously an amazing, amazing motivator and teacher. So we are very lucky to have him. All right, guys, go be awesome. Get this stuff done and go get it. Thank you. You Thank are you. so welcome. Bye, guys. Keep those, Bye. Listing, uh, keep those listing agreements coming. If you haven't sent it to me, go ahead and send it. We're looking at them. I was looking yes. at them this morning. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.